Hey everyone, within most Excel spreadsheets that you come across, there's going to be some form of data entry type work that needs to be done within it. And with literally thousands of data entry type jobs out there, I figure now is a good time to go through 5 tips that will help you save time and become more productive when doing data entry type work in Excel. And with that said, let's get started. Our first tip is using the tab and enter keys to enter in rows of information. So in this example, I have a list of employees at a company, and I want to add an employee to the list. So first I'm going to enter in the first name, and then I'm going to use the tab key to move on to the next cell. Then I'm going to type in the last name, and then hit the tab key again. When working in Excel, if there's a value that already exists, what will happen when you start typing in the word is it'll start to auto-complete the cell for you. So in this case, I started typing the word finance and it already started, already filled out the rest of the cell for me. So I'm just going to hit the enter key and watch where the active cell goes. So the active cell actually moves back to the very first column where you started typing in. And from there, I can start typing out new information and using the tab key again to move from each cell to the next. And then again, operations already exist, and so it auto completes for me, and then I'm just gonna hit the enter key. Using the tab and enter keys is a really efficient way of moving from one cell to another, and the fact that it remembers where your first column is is a big advantage. Tip number two is using a data entry form. The data entry form provides a little more structure where you fill in fields of the form and then it will actually put those values into the spreadsheet for you once you're done. So here's how to use the data entry form. What you need to do is select a piece of data in your data set and then go up to the search bar and search for the word form. And it's just this action right here. What this does is it brings up a pop-up which is actually your form. And let's say I need to add a new employee to this list. So I'm just gonna click new and then start typing in the information using the tab key to move from one field to the next. Then once I'm done, I'm going to hit the enter key and then the record is automatically added to the list. You can also use a data entry form to update existing data. So if you want to go back to a previous record and change the department or something like that, what we can do is just change the department in the field, press the enter key, and then it'll change the value just like that. When it comes to entering information into a spreadsheet, having consistent data is very important. One way to ensure that you have consistent data is through our next tip, which is using a drop down list. There are two types of drop down lists, so let's go through the first one. The first one's a simplified drop down list, and it works like this. Since there are already existing departments shown above like sales, finance, operations, what we can do is use the shortcut Alt and then the down arrow key and that'll bring up all of the existing values that exist within the department column. So I want to select finance so I'm just going to go up with the arrow key and then press the enter key. So that's one way to ensure that you always have consistent data. Another way to create a drop down list is to go up to this data tab and then click data validation and then in here select list and then in the source box click this button and then select the cells that you want to be a part of your drop down then hit the enter key and then click ok and now you will have created a drop down list so when you click the drop down, you can select the department. So that's the second way to create a drop down list based on values in the cell range. Our fourth tip is to use custom sorting to help you view your data better. By default, the sorting options that Excel has to offer is ascending and descending. So for example, I can sort the department by alphabetical order by right clicking anywhere in the column and then clicking sort and then clicking sort A to Z. But what if I wanted to sort by department as well as the first name? I mean, I'm gonna right click the first name 
and then click sort and then click sort from A to Z again. But then the department gets messed up. This is where custom sorting will come in. So to use custom sorting, go to home and then go to sort and filter and then click custom sort. This will bring up a pop-up and then you can see it's going to sort by first name. So I'm going to click department instead and then I'm going to add a level to then sort by the first name. So it's going to sort by department and then by first name right afterwards, both from A to Z. Click OK. And now our data is sorted a little more nicely. Our fifth tip is to use the freeze panes feature to keep the column headers intact when viewing your data. Once a data set gets to be really large in size, it might become hard to view your data. So in this example, we have a full list of employees and when I scroll down, I lose the column headers. So a way to keep the column headers intact is to select the row right beneath the row containing the headers that you want to keep, going to the view tab, and then going to freeze panes. Now I'm gonna pick the first option, but there are some other options too, such as freezing the top row or freezing the first column. So I wanna freeze the first three rows. So I'm just gonna choose the first option here. And now when I scroll down, I can still see the column headers. And then if I wanna unfreeze it, I can simply click freeze panes and then select the first option. And there you have it. Those are five tips that will help you save time and become more productive when doing data entry type work in Excel. If you found this type of content useful, hit the thumbs up button on this video for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video.